<laughs> what? Every time you start with that laugh, I get scared. The episode may start with that laugh. Honestly, I wouldn't mind it. Because if that laugh starts and then it goes into the line, which is, people under 5'2 continue to catch strays. Because today we're going to be talking about none other than the leagues of voting. <laughs> I am a dwarf and I'm digging. Oh, of course, hole. of course. Diggy, diggy hole. I am Isander. I am Coda. And that was a joke, by the way. You're all you're all fantastic, despite the great moral failing of being beneath six foot. I, you can't help it. It is what it is. It's okay, short um, kings and queens. We still love you. The fixation on height has never not amused me. It's hilarious. And it's it's prevalent in 40k too, because these guys are either the most and the least requested at the same time. They had the most votes. Against, every vote against something was the Space Dwarves. Pretty much. They just had so many votes everywhere else that it overwhelmed them. It also is because they're the newest thing. They're the shiny new thing. Uh, you guys do get to decide what these episodes, the order they come out in, or if they come out in at all. There are only two choices left. It's the Ab Humans and the Rogue Traders, who have a game coming out next week, I think. So those next are next week. I think I'm not sure. Streets are saying apparently. Streets are saying. So you sound off in the comments. It is all up to you. Uh, as always, we are on a mission. As a legion, we kind of move as one. So the next goal is going to be 250k. So if you want to help us hit that, just make sure you hit that big button and then the, the real subscribe button to the right of it because that's how the system works. The machine god's a scary thing. Uh, we also have a Patreon where you can get twice as many episodes of what you already love as well as priority voting, access to the Discord, and a bunch of other perks while helping us keep all these various lights on. So thank you to all of those signing on as I speak and thank you for those of you who've already who've been there. Some of you have been there from the beginning. And now, let's get back to today's faction, who is the first to have a hard time passing G-dubs. You must be this tall to get Lorf sign. You think, you think I'm joking? The Emperor's huge. He's got entire volumes dedicated to does, him. Does lore scale with height in 40k? The Emperor, his sons, the orcs. So, all, even the Eldar are fairly tall. Do the writers at GW have a complex? Uh, uh, they're basically saying if you're below 6'8", you're not worth anything. <laughs> if you're a guy and you're below 6'8", hit the bricks. Don't, does, don't you listen don't to them. Matter. Don't listen to them. We still love you here. <laughs> and they are, like I mentioned, the newest kind of. Because they did exist in 40K way, way back uh, when it was more tongue-in-cheek and very, very silly. 40K used to be... It's really weird, and I kind of like how weird it used to be. Um, back then, when they first came out, they were quite literally just fantasy dwarves in space. That was it. We had the space elves, the space orcs, space humans, space dwarves. Yeah, it, it was just it, fantasy in space, and it was silly, and it was all very brightly colored, and it was a bunch of short, squat, stout men on bikes, for God's sake. It was the most ridiculous-looking thing you'll see, but it's endearing in that way, you know? It's just like, that's... On bikes, you say? Yeah, it was like a biker gang. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a very specific aesthetic. All I can think of is uh, a Torbjorn from Overwatch in that weird biker skin with the, yeah. like, huge Harleys with the, what do they call them? Uh, the ape hanger yeah. the handlebars yeah, you know, where they're just, like, two feet in the air. When you're finding art for this, you will see that. That's basically what they used to be. And <laughs> if you don't believe how much of a gag they, they were, <laughs> their scientific name in canon was Homo sapiens rotundus. Oh. I, I love old GW. They were... They were weird. Um, they were also fairly popular even back then. However, they did get axed really aggressively. That's unfortunate. And that's because of this... Um, you know when something wants to, to grow up, and so there's this very edgy phase where it takes itself way too seriously? Evil Superman. We're getting to that. It's a vicious cycle you see all the time with you know like every, every disney star ever wants to leave disney and so they do the hardest pivot you've ever seen the second they're done like the whole good girl gone bad routine and some some make it a lot don't that disney schedule is brutal so this video should have started with what do space dwarves evil superman and miley cyrus have in common 
Yeah, P- pretty pretty much. It's a phase in every. It's 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 a phase in every human life. I mean, even even we do it right. And uh, it ends when you finally zen out and you realize being an adult isn't burning everything that makes you feel like a child, but it's just being a reliable, responsible person who does the best they can every day. That's really it. I don't care what you do for your spare time. As long as you're those three things as an adult, you're functional. That's really all it takes. Um, Because if you try and ignore and stuff away that very cringy kid who ran around in an N7 hoodie all through middle school and freshman year of high school, we would not get the very cogent and artistic and fun human being we have today. <laughs> mm. That hoodie was that was a phase. That hoodie is still packed away somewhere. In I was gonna closet. say, do you still have it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we might have to bring that back someday. <laughs> uh, but it's not just people who do this. Companies do it too. Comics did it in the '90s. It's where we got. Uh, have you seen that version of Batman where he's wearing a skin tight suit and like ten utility belts, and he's got these massive shoulder pauldrons that are spiked too? <laughs> Have you seen that variant? That's when yeah. that's when that came out. Yep. Um, and every new hero had to have the superpower of Glock and kitchen knife. <laughs> the '90s were rife with heroes that had names that were like Blade, War, Bloodsport, and Carnage. For God's sake, Shadow. And they weren't. It's not like, oh, dude, my favorite is Shadow holding a real gun. My favorite a real I think it's like an, an MP5. My sh- my favorite thing, my favorite thing is Shadow. Shadow. No, I think or was it a shotgun? No, it wasn't a shotgun. Oh. But I can I can understand how you got to that conclusion. I think it is either an MP5 or an MP5. or an HK something mm-hmm. because he he, he shotgun cocks, cocks he, it. It's an MP5 because he cocks it, and I remember that pisses me off. Mm-hmm. I swear that, yeah. No, because he puts the banana mag in, and then, yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah. No. Why? Why did you cock an MP5? <laughs> it was a weird era. It was a lot. Everything was really in that angsty phase, and during that time, Superman could no longer save the day. He could no longer do any of that with a smile on his face. He had to be a dark and twisted individual who only pretends to be good and drinks mother's milk i guess because homeland is a riot yeah ick (laughs) and to this day dc movies are still going through that because i will sooner lose my arm than they realize you can light a scene with a man who wears red blue and yellow and it look fine like heaven forbid he crack a smile and henry cavill can smile we've I, seen it i really i really hate i really hate i really I, hate the new man of steel and justice leagues uh, because they 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 just ruin they just trash the characters absolutely especially since just make them so miserable they took the most creative way you could do an evil superman mm. where it's just like he's not evil but he may like get about like uh beating the criminals up in a sketchy manner and everybody nowadays has cell phones running around mm-hmm. but they don't do that they 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 don't do that they use the oh we got superman on a cell phone video once and it's not for uh, they just make him evil because, like, he got revived. I don't know. I, 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 and he's only evil for half a second till he sees the sun and the curvature of the earth. And he's like, mm, maybe I shouldn't, you know, bash it all up. It's like, I, 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 mm, I hate the DCC who. It, it makes me unhappy. They have very good characters that I just can't seem to translate onto screen and I don't know what the issue I is. I know DC has Because they have good characters. directors. They have fantastic casting. I can't like Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman, Henry Cavill is Superman. It makes sense. The one thing that I can think of is uh, these movies are written by a boardroom instead of writers. I, I don't I... And so and so like all of these board members like are like designed by committee kind of a situation a designed by committee kind of a situation where it's a committee of like fat cats who are just like whipping the writers <laughs> no it needs this to be a good movie no it needs this to be a good movie come on writer write <laughs> 
No, you must understand, Superman's movie needed the giant beam in the sky that was prevalent in every hero I movie <laughs> back in the day. Regardless. I regardless, hate designed by committee things. Regardless. My grievances about me never getting my favorite character done well in anything outside of animation aside, 40K does this too. Even though they're bathing in edge. Yes, even they had a serious phase. And during that time, they basically fired every... Like, they, they cut the entire silly department and left it to the orcs. And in that, that's how we lost the dwarves. That's how we lost the dwarves. Because we don't, didn't allow them to be silly? Yeah. Because that's things were getting grimmer and darker, and there's no room for a weird biker gang floating around. It's like, come on. It, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Just, just, again, I come back to this. Do what Deep Rock Galactic did. Make what? them like a weird corporation. This was the 90s. Like I said, this was, this was that time. Well, yeah, it was the 90s. Yeah, I think. Uh, regardless, it's not that they didn't sell well, because people from GW have come out and said that. It's just that they felt like they could make everything its own thing while making it edgier. Because that's what... It's, it's the grim dark. It's edgy. It's got to be edgy. It's so edgy. And that's on purpose. That's the fun of it. Uh, and they, they could make, like, you know, they could make... Uh, 40K's humans different from fantasy's humans by, you know, bathing them in that darkness and stuff. But the, nobody at the time, at least according to the sources I could find, could find a way to do that well for the for the space dwarves. So it left them as just a caricature where they had, like, the Book of Grudges. And it's just, like, they, they weren't a real thing. It was just like a, a Mickey Mouse suit, basically. It, it was just every, it was the greatest hits of everything dwarves do. Let's keep it pushing. Uh -huh. They didn't feel distinct in their own way, and nobody really had the fuel to make them that these are, way. These are dwarves. Say hi to your dwarves. Okay, the dwarves are going to go do their thing. Let me tell you about um, uh, some guys painted in blue. Yeah, pretty much. This is a great time. Uh, <laughs> and they didn't, because it's 40K. You can't just, what dwarves? They never existed. So uh, they made them bump into the Tyranids. where they lost 90% of their survival. There was Yeah. They committed committed them to death by Tyranid? I'll, I'll be honest. If I was a G-Dub writer and I needed something to go away, throwing the, Throw the Tyranids, Tyranids at, at it, it is such a good consistent The Tyranids way. are the orcs, maybe? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they were eaten with zero problems. And after that, they were also kind of hard black bagged there for a little bit, too. Like they reissued books and they were books that had them in them. And they were nowhere to be seen. Hmm. Yeah, so they got memory hold for a few moments there. That's real unfortunate. Uh, but but not always. There have been rumors. It was a meme for a while that they'll be canon again. And recently, last year, they are canon again. They're canon again? Yes. We now have our space dwarves. Because, uh, space dwarves back. Yeah, and they're now called the Leagues of Votan because trademarks truth like i mean you do the best you can with them but that's the real reason like, also i can imagine gw is just like well okay the hobbit movie just came out a couple couple years ago we can't have our dwarves being associated with their dwarves well the, our dwarves are different well part of it again they were never unpopular and even when they were gone they were always people who remembered them and talked about them all the time so gw was kind of leaving money on the table because mm -hmm. There were people who wanted them. People There's wanted their space dwarves. no shortage of people who want space dwarves. So G Dub was just kind of like, mm, it was it was there in a pile waiting. They just had to make models. That's so all they did. I mean, come on. There's only so long you can ignore it. And they actually did a good job of bringing them back, balancing all the things they had to do because it is kind of hard once you write something out to put it back in without breaking everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, you're telling me a major faction has been here for the last ten thousand years and nobody noticed. They were hanging out under mountains. Close. 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 Um, they... They called it a mine. They tend to... The, the, the reason they call it the Leagues of Votan is because it's, it's a bunch of... It's a League of Dwarves, basically, around these things called Votan. And they are the most terrifying things in 40k, kind of, because it's this massive AI core that has knowledge on science engineering military theory strategy philosophy anything you need to know you can ask a votant and it will tell you hmm. it just may take a little bit but it will tell you these things it even has the ability to make stcs 
for those of you that don't know, it's uh, they're basically 3D printers that you'd ship out with people when you wanted them to take over a planet, and it could make anything they would need out of the materials available. One has been found before, and all it did was make slightly better knives. Those people who found it got entire planets to rule over. Huh. They are taken very seriously. It is some of the most advanced tech in the Imperium, and they want it bad, and the Leagues of Odin have a thing that can make those things. I'd imagine they are beefing so hard with the Mechanicus. No, it's actually very uh. funny. Um, they are fantastic thespians around the Mechanicus. Because what they will do is they will... So, they board the ships, right, for, for trade and all that. And when they board the ship, it's, like, slightly off keel. It can never get balanced properly. There's a bunch of dwarves just per performing percussive maintenance on random things. There's... The the captain of the ship is literally rubbing, like, three stones together, going, hamana, 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 hamana. Bam! And that's how they figure out where to go. And the Mechanicus looks around and goes... Oh, so they're stupid. There's nothing intelligent. They're here. just stupid, and they can mine through sheer muscle. Oh, okay. Just give us the just give us the resources. Let's go. And then the second the Mechanicus leaves, ship corrects itself. All the holograms pop back up. They immediately start fixing all the things they dented, and they fly away. <laughs> it's so much fun. That's it's, hilarious. Because if the Mechanicus knew, it's a war. It's a huge war. It's an all-out war. Almost no debate. There's nobody in the Imperium who could stop. The, if the Mechanicus finds out those are there, they are immediately turning their full focus. Their entire, yeah. And the Imperium kind of needs the Mechanicus, so they'll go, help them with the war so they get back to gun making. That would mean the Leagues of Otan are probably going to just go bye-bye, because they are probably more technologically advanced than anything the Imperium has, but... Uh, <sighs> Space Marines are a lot. They're a lot. Space Marines are a and lot. there are also so many of them. Yeah. Actually, my favorite thing is they have tiny baby bolters they use. They, they'd still hit as hard as Space Marine ones. Voting are very good at assembling things and giving you the blueprints you need to make anything, including a bolter, but smaller. That's funny. A I bolter, admit... but child-sized. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much fun. And every, every, every toddler must be armed with a bolter. Yeah. And uh, that, so that's how they keep it secretive and that's how they're survived so far um i also critically said that there are there's multiple yeah multiple. They have things there's plenty of voting floating I, around i heard i heard the s at the end of there exactly and so <laughs> you can see why the leagues will do anything to protect them from the outside world while also keeping them completely secret nobody would know they exist except for them that's pretty much it. They don't they don't tell anyone that these are a thing. Another reason they really don't like to share any information on those AI cores is because of the Emperor. Kinda. So you know he's currently stuck in a chair after being hit by sweet chin music. Like, come on, come on. You know. Fat Geralt appeared and hit him really hard. That's what happened to the Emperor. And he can't do anything except for pass the time acting as a massive psychic lighthouse that can be used to navigate from any part of the galaxy. He's that bright and that powerful, even in death, kind of. That weird in between period. Exactly. However, he's not the only such beacon. Because apparently those AI cores put out a similar effect passively. They too are that powerful. Huh. Yeah, it's not it's not as bright. It can't be seen from everywhere. But if you know what you're looking for. And also, key thing, there are multiple of them. Mm -hmm. There is only one emperor. Yeah, and <clears throat> this actually ties into how they brought the leagues back and made them canon. Because they made it so it wasn't all the space dwarves that bumped into the Tyranids, but one league in their voting. And they, like I said, they will do anything to protect them. And as far as they were concerned, this new force bearing down on them wanted to get that core behind them. So they laid down everything, all their lives, trying to defend this thing, which is critically why they didn't run away. You know, because it's like, you've lost 90% of your forces. At what point do you consider to run? They would never. 
So they go basically edge of tomorrow style, live, die, repeat, live, die, repeat mm-hmm. over and over <laughs> completely outnumbered. And the, they figured out fairly quickly that the Tyranids thrive off of eating bodies from the field. So what they did is they started feeding their fallen into their voting so that the memories of the dead could be used to try and find a new way around this. Like <laughs> we need to find oh. something, right? They, they, they. <clears throat> Fought fire with fire. Yeah, so they just started stuffing all their fallen into the core, breaking their bodies down and having all those memories just stuffed in, hoping they can find a weakness in this unending tide that just came up one day and is not leaving. It's stripping the very minerals from the soil itself. It's the end of days as far as they were concerned. And this would continue over and over and over. The Tyranids weren't getting any stronger because the bodies were being yanked out all the time. However... That's still dwarves just folding at a rate well above replacement. It's a lot of that's a lot of bodies going down. And so eventually, all of the league was gone, and all that was left was a core spattered red, with every angle of a Tyranid invasion in its head. Yeah, and as fast as they came, they rendered the whole world dead, and they left. They didn't take the core with them, did they? The Tyranids want the meat in the fridge. They may rip the door off the hinges to get it, but they're not going to eat the whole fridge. Mm. This is there. What am I supposed to do? I can't eat a machine. Yeah, what am I supposed to do that? So they could care less, and they left that core there to sit and think on a dead world alone, just watching angle after angle after angle of its league folding trying to protect it and this eventually drives it insane i was gonna say this machine grows a personality and has a joker moment doesn't it yeah yeah it 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 has it has felt an enemy that even it cannot beat it is a cosmic thing that will end everything it has ended everything it held dear and it just becomes you know the way it was a beacon in the warp before it now becomes this hazard for anything traveling near it. It's a corrupted variant of that beacon. Oh. It's literally called the Mad Core, and it's just howling into the ether. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That thing's just there. They. It's so bad, every single league is told, avoid that area. Yeah, that's it, that... that is the deadest zone. It's that's basically... not just a dead zone. It's a deadest zone. Yeah, it's like if the Bermuda Triangle had like a hurricane around it at all times <laughs> just avoid it don't go near it we're done it's it's over just charge that whole section of sea we're not going anywhere near it and so that's just something that's there and hopefully nobody finds it because whew, who knows what that'll do critically it could be the most helpful thing against the tyranids because it's seen every angle it's only been watching that forever now it may have come up with a counter strategy at, at some point. That's yeah, if you can get through the insanity. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, those cores are nothing to joke about, and I love how they still canonized it. They still made them bump into the Tyranids, but instead of everyone, it was just one. It was just that legion. Very, very unfortunate group. However, I know what you're probably thinking. That explains how they didn't die out. But where have they been? <laughs> because again. A major faction coming out of nowhere and nobody noticed them at all. And that is because they have been right under our noses the entire time. They've been under mountains. They're dwarves. Kind of. Um, in their past, and it, it's it's really... I'm talking before the Emperor passed. They were sent... Yeah, yeah, yeah they're old. Um, They were sent to go to the galactic core itself on a mission that has the same odds of success as Sisyphus pushing the boulder all the way to the top only to find Einstein waiting to tell him I'm your father I've missed you this whole time and then everyone claps it is an impossible area (laughs) there is nothing you can do in there that is safe I mean in our world the center of galaxies usually has a massive black hole in the middle of it Surrounded by pockets of more black holes. That actually sound very terrifying, apparently. (laughs) At least per NASA, black holes sound like what you'd think. (laughs) Which, oh. But uh, because it's 40k, it's gotta get worse. It's gotta get much, much worse. So instead of 
one or a few black holes, it's multiple, supermassive ones, just careening around all the time. As, as they if, do. As if that's not bad enough, it's extreme. Ra- there's extreme radiation everywhere, massive gravitational waves that just rack everything in space, uh, moving singularities which is the center of a black hole that nothing can escape, just roving around faster than you can do anything about. Sentient nebulae just running around, which I can't fathom how a cloud that makes stars would be sentient, but also it's a cloud that can make stars, so I don't want it to be sentient. I have a bunch of, um, uh, what's his name, from League of Legends running around. Uh, Aurelian Sol. Yeah, yeah, it's terrifying and that's just the stuff we know that you can observe from far away because nothing that goes in comes out (laughs) (laughs) and so that is where the dwarves are sent because everything in there is untouched and because of its extreme environment that just because you know to make a diamond you need just an obscene amount of pressure a lot of valuable materials require very very difficult uh situations to replicate on a planet that is compatible with life let's say (laughs) so There's just treasure troves floating around in the most dangerous place possible. So they were sent there, hopefully, to figure that out. It wasn't like these ships were stupid fast or anything. They were pretty slow, actually. It's the generational kind of ship where you're born, you die, you're born, you die. over Until you get to where you need to get to. Yeah, yeah. And over time, they slowly prepared themselves and adapted to the situation at hand. Um, With the help of those AI cores I mentioned earlier, um, they got shorter and for lack of a better term denser (laughs) um bones muscle i mean bones made of iron steel in their bones it's very very like they got compacted down basically this is is the stupidest way to justify dwarves the coolest way to justify having dwarves in your setting and this is why i love 40k it's so over the top it jumps the shark does a backflip while holding two flamethrowers and you can't help but think it's cool <sighs> did it still jump the shark yeah but it's so cool but look it wasn't that just cool it, right uh, their their red blood cells and white blood cells shot through the roof and their skin became so tough in some of the models it looks like stone <laughs> just to plausibly survive it and all of this was I done I love and I hate this all at the same time it's so time. great you may be wondering how the hell do you make changes like this happen everywhere all at once and that's because they do not shag <laughs> they're all clones oh there, there's there's no funny business okay so for all you artists put the pens down that's not canon good that <laughs> it's true it's not <laughs> put yeah. your drawing tablet away steve yeah doesn't count uh so yeah they're all clones and the way the the avoid uh the the whole Habsburg situation <laughs> or the becoming as inbred as pugs are is it's not just cloning the same dude a hundred times but there's this massive store of their genetic data that this core can basically mix and match make a person mix and match make a person mix and match make a person and so they're still different and because they don't again they don't shag so it's once they die that's it you just put it back where it came from mix and match make a new person Mm -hmm. and so it it just kept playing that game until it figured out well we can fit more people on a ship if they're short and stout (laughs) and that's how we got space dwarves i am not kidding (sighs) and that is also how they're varied enough to avoid the crimson chin (laughs) (laughs) because they're all clones too they almost don't exist to chaos they can't perceive them they they can but you gotta be looking really close well how do you mean well it's like the tower they're it's very suppressed presence in the warp almost none Mm. so i mean they're clones for god's sake just think in star wars did you ever see a clone use the force like come on no because they don't clone them with enough midi-chlorian sensitivity oh god here we go (laughs) we're leaving we're leaving we're leaving i thought that'd be a quick in and out it's not (laughs) we're leaving um (laughs) With the help of their cores and the purpose, they were literally built for the job. They're built for tough. (laughs) They they were able to strip mine the galactic core with a success rate that nobody has been able to replicate. 
They what? <laughs> yup. They have massive excavators that can disassemble stars. They can refine elements that can't exist outside of this terrible environment that they're in. And over time, they began trading with each other. Because it's the leagues of Votan. There's multiple Votan running around. So, you know, they, they started like, hey, you got the star disassembler, I got the planet gibber. Let's, uh, you know, let's trade. We're rich. We're rich. We're, we're rich. rich. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. Yeah. We're rich. They were, they were doing the whole dwarf routine. <laughs> it's such a fun way to justify stupid dwarfisms. I love it. <laughs> so instead of the heart of the mountain, you've got the core of the star. If you were to do dwarves in space, it would be the core of a star. I love it. Uh -huh. Somebody at G-Dub clearly loves them, and I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> as they were developing, they also started building uh, settlements, holds as they were, because you know dwarfs need their fortress. Come on, it, it, it's, it's in the label. And dwarf fortress, I like the video game. Yes, dwarf I fortress. know that was the point. <sighs> okay, whatever. <laughs> You're subtle as a stop sign sometimes. Uh, each hold looks vastly different, and so you have. Some that are these underground labyrinths that span right beneath the surface of an entire planet. Just all over the place. Some are these massive asteroids with like, you know like those domes in every sci-fi that are that basically make a livable space on an unlivable space? Yeah, like population domes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Surviving Mars is full of them. Exactly. Asteroids full of those that are like chained together into this network. It's so cool. That's cool. It's so cool. My personal... So, another one is uh, like if the ISS could drop rods of God, basically. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Others, and my personal favorite, are these space-based factories that um, it just looks like a normal fortress floating in space. The usual stuff, right? So the way they defend themselves is they are right on the edge of the event horizon for a black hole. Oh. And, and I'm talking this close before they cross it. And they've just mathed it out. They figured out the exact amount of pull it exerts, the exact amount of push they need to leave because they're good at their jobs. And so they are perfectly there. And anyone who wants to screw them has to think... Is it worth it for me to try and figure this out how, where I'll possibly fall in and die? Or do I just do leave I go it? into the event horizon or how much time do I have to waste because special relativity relativity? It's not worth it. It's not it's worth it. It's not worth it. So imagine the it. amount of science they have going on in that, because they have years and years and years shrunk down into I love them. You, now do you see why I love that one a lot? I like that one a lot. Right? Um, <laughs> the holds can be anything you can imagine, though. I, that's the thing I enjoy the most about them, is whatever you can envisage surviving in this horrific environment that they inhabit probably, probably exists in some form. Um, but it's not just the dwarves raising their picks and their voices together, because it's their robots there, too. And I'm not talking like, oh, you know, like, because, you know, 40K, they've, they've got, like, mech suits and stuff, right? No, I'm talking autonomous robots hmm. that can think and plan and strategize and work. Uh -huh. And I can... The Imperium would hate those, wouldn't they? Oh, dude, the Imperium had these things called Men of Iron. Oh, <laughs> the things did not go well for them because the, they did not treat the Men of Iron right. Mm -hmm. So they definitely... They had the robot uprising. Yeah, exactly. They um, did their own mini Detroit Become Human. Yeah. Um, the the Butlerian Jihad. Yeah, the League, the way they've avoided that is they're straight up equal. Huh. I mean, think about it. I mean, we're clones. They're robots. We all come from an assembly line. 50-50. What does it matter? The, it doesn't matter. It, I will be disassembled turn into goo and put back into that vat you'll be disassembled and turned into a new robot doesn't matter does not matter it's I, I mean pure equal under the like it's not just oh that is another person right it is oh god that guy got stuck there and now they pull a full-blown like escapade to save him from a cave-in and it's mm. a robot that they're doing that for and vice versa too you made me like them a lot. Right? Like, they, they will they will go down into the deep with zero fear, fear of what they'll find beneath. Because, like, Phil is down there, and who cares if Phil is a robot? We yeah. like Phil. Yeah, we like Phil. Phil's great. What? He He's the only one who can fill the tankard just right. We gotta save Phil. <laughs> like, come on. And so... Think I, of his extensive baseball card collection. Who will that go to? We don't have family lines, so it's not like he's gonna give it to his kids. Yeah, 
I love the I love them so much. Um, but it goes even further than that because it's not just a superficial like, oh yeah, we're coworkers, brother. Like they are full blown like unionized. They they have these guilds that are industry specific, and so the way they work is those guilds will represent their industry, right? And the, like in their version of like the Senate, but like shorter. <laughs> It's, it's really it. Just imagine the Senate. But boop. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the reason I love the guilds so much is because it gives this... It's, it's a vibe I don't see often enough, which is futuristic blue collar. And I really, really like that. Because the people in charge of the guilds, it's a, like they have work and quality quotas. They have, oh, we need to do this much at this time. They will like bargain for specific. It's a whole, it's, they're doing a job. No, it's cool to see that they're, uh, <laughs> you really can't translate the, uh, the Deep Rock Galactic to this because they're unionized. Deep Rock is not. They're, no, no, they're very, very not. not. Yeah. And, <laughs> I, it, I like it because it, it's such a stark difference because a lot of the future is usually like white collar work. It's an administrator or a manager, which I, I still love. I'm a huge Gilman fan. I'm, I'm all for that. But I, I, I need more of this, like the future variant of the working man kind of a situation. It basically, if you took Ford's aesthetic, and I say aesthetic specifically because we've all seen the pavement princesses running around. <laughs> I know that bed hasn't seen any sheetrock, and I know those tires haven't seen any mud. That's I know those dualies don't do any any hauling. I straight up they're I, spotless. I respect the people who buy them and use them, and I also just respect the people who admit it. Hey, I wanted I wanted it. It's cool. And I'll say, yeah, okay, cool. I, I'd be in the same boat. Do I need one? No. Do I want one? Yeah. But they're admit cool. that you don't need it. I don't need one at all. They're so cool, though. I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> and so that specific aesthetic that they have, and you just slap it all over the future. I mean, it's just a hardworking man running the show. It's so great. That's dude. They they will cooperate and organize across various uh le like various leagues to accomplish things. And while they don't, they don't all get along. I promise you that right now. They do not all get along. They will at least put the guns down, and then a bar fight will break out. And then winner buys a loser. I mean, losers buy the winner's drink. That's how they solve problems. It's a, it's a friendly rivalry. Yeah, exactly. Well, unless 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 this has to do with their with their core, their their voting. Oh, then it's it's all. It, like, I will <laughs> I I will strangle you. It's a no holds barred. Yeah, it's no. They you don't matter anymore. <laughs> if it's if they have to choose between another league and their core, mine specifically. Yeah, no, they're gone. I'm sorry. They can figure it out. They should have been more prepared. I'm sorry. My core helped me get prepared. Did yours? Yeah. That sounds like a you problem. They also have a very interesting disposition because of where they've been. Because they don't have jail. They don't have prison. They don't have courts. If if you... Because first, first of all, they're clones. So they're usually on the same page. It's clones and robots. There's not much disagreement to be had there. Okay. But... um. But if somebody does, because some people do do things and they betray the core, and they, they, they call it like the ancestor core, AI core, voting, whatever the hell you want to call it. If you commit a crime against it and you break that close-knit bond that has been the only thing that has let them survive in these terrible conditions, they will just exile you. Not even disassembly? No, because no, you, you, you don't understand. It's, first of all, they're exiling you to brave the horrors of deep space alone. So mm -hmm. you, A, you won't. And B, they will go back to the Votan and tell them your true full name so that it knows that you have failed them. It will, like, mark your code specifically and forbid you from joining any other Legion ever. Or any other League ever. Huh. Yeah. They don't huh. want... You abandoned us. Something was wrong with your code. We don't want it back. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> they are. I mean, it's dwarves. They have a long memory. The Book of Grudges. <laughs> Come on. Do you really think they? They have no quarter for that kind of stuff. Um. They also have a bunch of. Um. It's not just the the working man aesthetic that they have going on. They they really do think and act like that. My favorite saying they have is "luck has." Need keeps, but toil earns. <laughs> toil. Yeah. Toil. Yeah. Oh. I love it because, A, it's just a good saying. Like, you could put that up on, like, a factory wall 
and I'm sure there's one that has it. But B, it's slightly insidious because you can twist it and go, you only have that because you're lucky. I need it, so I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to earn it. <laughs> and they have the work ethic to back that up. <laughs> they have the work ethic to back that up. So, yeah, you don't play with them. Uh, they also have love to say, like, the, the ancestors are watching. A, because they, they wouldn't be here without their ancestors. And in some way, they are the ancestors just recombined a bit. So they, they do have that as a saying. They really value honoring your ancestor. They really value living to the most that you can. That way, when you're added back into the database, you've added a ton. You've added so much. And you are now the ancestor who's watching, you know? That really, that that's a really cool concept to me because it reminds me of um, uh, Bethesda's Dark Elves who have like a... Uh, a I'm, I'm going to say just because it's not at all fleshed out from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. It's like a gesturing at the ancestors. I, that could be, I, 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 I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I have not yet not finished. Scared. I've not yet finished Morrowind. Mm -hmm. I know I'm like 20 years too late for that. I will get around to it. Uh, but the the Dark Elves kind of like they're all about like, oh, yes, for the ancestors or like I have my ancestor spirit. Right. This is like a really good like sci-fi translation of that because it's just like my ancestor's DNA is literally my DNA. No, I don't mean I'm descended from... Like, it's it's in there. Yeah. You see this weird mole on my hand? He had that yeah, too. Yeah, got, he got it from the same place. Yeah. No. Same genetic code. And I love it because you can also use it... It's You can use it as a battle cry, you know, like, fight good, the ancestors are watching. You can also use it as a warning, like, hey, buddy, the ancestors are watching, <laughs> you know? it's It's got very... It all depends on line delivery for that one. I love it so much. Um... They also hate wastage, period. I would imagine. That's, that's in keeping with dwarves. Well, yeah, but also think about it. They are in the galactic core. Uh, yeah, you threw that screw away, but now that panel's barely holding together, and we could have used that screw you saw 12 months ago. So why didn't you stash it? <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they will hang on to pretty much anything and everything because they will find a use for it, and if they can't, they'll go up to their AI core and go, what can we do with this? And it'll just, mm, sheet metal. Mm -mm. And that's what they use it for. Um, they, you, you may be noticing at this point though that uh, they, a, this is this is very cool. But why the hell are they back now? Because I mean, that's where they were. Now, they were just chilling in the galactic core. Why would they bit. ever leave? They why were getting they the best checks imaginable. And b, all of that seems very sensible, and not grimdark in forty k. Like that seems just functional. Yeah. So, Which is rare for this setting. Exactly. And you'd be correct on both counts because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Mm -hmm. uh, those, Tell me, what's the catch? The cores that they're formed around, the various leagues are formed around. Um, it's a class of all-knowing machinery that is going senile. Ah. <laughs> because what used to take it seconds to answer is now taking weeks. Some have been recorded as taking centuries to answer questions. Ah, um, the classic case of hard drive failure. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> back in the day, uh, like when they bumped into the Tyranids, it was a last-ditch survival effort to chuck bodies into that thing so it would have its memories and we could keep it pushing, right? However, now it's become almost a ritual and a spiritual thing, so they just keep chucking bodies into it over and over again. It means it's getting a lot of data, right? But a lot of it's filler. Oh, because they're hitting they're hitting rampancy. Yeah, because let's say you and me are stuffed into the gibber, let's call it, and all of our memories are put into the machine. That is really really useful stuff. Don't get me wrong. However, while it may have gotten all the knowledge I have and all the knowledge you have and that's all the useful stuff, it got Every conversation we've ever had together, from both angles. And those can't be deleted. It has your childhood memories of you bumping around. All the breakfasts you've ever had, just staring out a window. All the long bus rides. It has all of that. And no, it's not all relevant. They're hitting rampancy. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's You've just opened a new tab after new tab after new tab after new tab over and over and over again. And this is a machine that was designed to do a lot. It was designed to help them survive the galactic core, learn from that environment, and help them adapt to it. It's very good at that. 
It's been 10,000 plus years. It's thinking itself to death. Yeah, and it's never been turned off. And it knows a lot. There are limits to repairing something like that. You know the way, like, science advanced enough is indistinguishable from magic is the the whole quote, right? Uh, Yeah. That is basically magic to them. You know, they, they can understand a lot. It can help them understand how to make... It's like if a real wizard appeared and he could teach you how to make a fighter jet. And that's so cool, but you're not going to learn how to cast Thunderbolt. (laughs) That's not how that works. There are limits, and that's the biggest problem here. So glitches are coming out. And on top of that, some of them are even getting things like personalities. Like that mad one I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Or some are are getting answers, but they're having sphinx-like situations. Or I it's a riddle that. that you have to solve. Yeah, or just, you know, the worst case scenario. It takes a century to get... How do we make a toaster? Computing. And then three generations later, <laughs> it tells you exactly what you need for a toaster. It's... It's... Well, thanks. I've been dead for 300 long years. Mm-hmm. And it's only getting worse. And it's all And there. my toast is still... In fact, my toast is moldy because it's been 300 years, dude. Yeah. And it's nobody's fault... But their own. Nobody made them do this. Nobody taught them how to do this. This is all them. They should have stopped, but they didn't. And now they're reaping the consequences. But that's not the only reason they're leaving. Because for those of you that don't know, 40K is a galaxy. A lot like ours. It's really cool. It kind of looks like the Milky Way. Hmm. It's split in half right now. (laughs) And the way tearing something in half works is it goes right through the middle. (laughs) Uh So the galactic core is now even more dangerous. Whole leagues have just gone. Well, because I assume... The line same, cut through them, that's it. Same thing as what happens to that one sister's battle legion. It just cleaved right through them, and whatever was there in the middle... You just And the storms in the core have gotten worse. Everything oh, in the core has gotten worse. The black holes have gotten unstable. It's It's gone from unsurvivable to inhospitable. Well, yeah, because you take the black holes, and then you add the literal chaos of chaos, and... Mm-hmm. Everyone on 40k, everyone in 40k, except for Chaos and the Tyranids, is on the ropes. <laughs> and so they've had to leave. They've had to interact with others, or they may not be around anymore. No. And so those interactions have been fairly interesting. The orcs. Oh, do they hate the orcs? <laughs> They're the first ones in the Book of Grudges. They're really? The f- um, Because... They're very conservative. They're very stubborn. They don't like change. And they, they hate wastage, right? And the orcs... We'll just fight. The orcs are like the, the most exact wasteful things. Opposite of that, and on top of that, because the orcs are no like they're jokes. They're very funny, but they're effective jokes, right? So they've taken out a league and its voting before, which uh, they then proceeded to counter that by spending the next couple hundred years slaughtering. Every orc from that clan until there was none left. <laughs> as an answer for that insult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did not take that sitting down. No, they did not. <laughs> they, they, that is one of the few AI cores. No, you don't get that. Even if it may not have been mine personally, I'm getting involved now. Mm-hmm. So that's a big So you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're also not fans of chaos because it makes no sense at all. And it's ripped their home in half. Mm-hmm. So, for obvious well, reasons. Something walked up to my house and somehow ripped it in half. I wouldn't be concerned about how it ripped it in half. I would say, why'd you rip my goddamn home in half? Yeah, and instead of like, you know, it's just raw ripped in half, there's just a little bit of hell there. Just a little smooth bit of hell paved in. You're like, ah, ah why? You brought the demons in too? Yeah. Uh, they hate the Necrons. Because they keep stepping on the landmine that is sleeping Necrons. <laughs> they because I'll be honest, these guys they, they like to diggy diggy holes. That's what they're good at. It's what they're best at. And so when they arrive at a planet, it's very loud, it's very sudden, and it'll wake up anything sleeping. There. And the, ne- and the, the necrons, necrons live in holes in the ground. And the Necrons hate being woken up early. <laughs> so they they usually will step on a planet and then immediately suffer for it. So they're not fans of that. Um, they actually hard fear the tyranids and not the usual oh you know it's the tyranids quake in your boots it's almost like a prey reacting to a predator it's on a different tier than them and they understand that because the the leagues there's a lot there's a lot of them if you can see they're all clones and you're also going to count the robots because they're a voting member and they're family so if you put all those together 
I remember reading they have more combined than the Eldar and the Tau. Like, there's a lot of tiny dudes running around. Huh. There's a lot of them running around. Still, critically, less than humans. Because humans are borderline the rats. They're the skaven of 40k. <laughs> there's so many of them. There's so many of them. Nothing's even close. But there's quite a few of them. There's quite a few of these guys. However, they, they fear the Tyranids. <laughs> Because the Tyranids are... They're, they're bad. It, it's not even like, okay, those guys want to hunt me for my technology. Those guys want to hunt me for my technology. That one just wants to hunt. I'm food. I'm food. Why am I food? I don't want to be food. So yeah, it makes sense why. I mean, to most things, the Tyranids are their natural predator. Honestly, even space marines see any new trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it is. They're kind of the that guy of this setting. Uh, or this moment right now. The Imperium will work with these guys, but that's usually because they pretend to be like, oh, yeah, you know, they're just, they're the dumb guys who come back mm. with my, like, come on, they got all the supplies we need, right? And um, that's how they operate usually. Um, they are seen as Xenos. They're, they're, they have diverged so far from the human genome that they're seen as something alien. So the... Inquisitors don't like him. <laughs> Inquisitors are not fans of him, but Inquisitors aren't well, fans fair, of anything. From what I've from what I've heard, the Inquisitors are on thin ice with the abhumans. So oh, thin ice, yeah. and they're they're not they're not even abhumans. They're outright aliens. Yeah, they're in the same category as the Eldar and stuff. They're that distinct. So yeah, oh, they which is it. funny because the Eldar just look like twinkier humans, and the dwarves just look like stockier humans. Yeah. Pretty much, but no, they're alien. Kill them. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are so so with the Mechanicus because they, they do fuel. They do fuel the Mechanicus by giving them minerals and the stuff they use to make machinery. However, they must always play incredibly stupid around them, which is kind of a big pet peeve. And it's also. It, they have to act stupid around these people who they feel are dumber, in a sense. Because we. May not know how to repair it, but we have a person we can talk to who will teach us how to repair it. And you just rubbed incense on the microwave and glued the air fryer to your junk. We are not the same. <laughs> See, as somebody who's worked a service job before, I can relate. Mm, yeah. I, that shouldn't make sense, but it makes sense to anybody who's worked a service job. I'm sure they'll agree. <laughs> I promise you right now. <laughs> they will agree. And then the last... Uh, or the town, the Eldar, they're, they're fine. The Eldar, they're all hoity and toity. They, they, they think they're the, they think they're the hottest thing in the galaxy, and that's because they were for five minutes there. <laughs> so they treat them in the same way. And the Tau, the Tau want to work with everyone if they can. Um, so the Tau are just ch chill. Yeah, there's actually a small subset of them that was kind of floating around in canon, not canon, canon, not canon, <laughs> within the Tau Empire. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so kind of... As equals or as, like, uh, uh, associates? Because I know the Tau can get weird about the people that they bring into the Empire. They're not jibbing you on the spot. Okay. Is my answer. Okay. okay. And that's kind of what we know for now. They haven't had a lot of time to interact. In fact, a lot of people are chafed about them because, uh, A... A lot of people feel like it's it's the Tau again, where they're coming in and they're not that grim dark, and they're also doing the thing the Tau did, which is being unconscionably strong on the table. <laughs> no, like ridiculously strong. I've 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 heard people. I wasn't obviously in the tabletop community around the time that the Tau were oh, yeah the Tau brought up, but I've heard the Tau were just like a menace to be against. These guys were a menace, and then. S s GW overcorrected, and now they're at the bottom. Now they're like, okay, I think. <laughs> is, is that, I don't keep close tabs on that, but I believe that's where it is as of recording. Um, also, like I said, they're very new. They're only a year old. Uh, they came out last year. A whole new edition came out in that time, and they have not gotten many updates. Mm. There's a book, allegedly, somewhere, maybe, possibly. Isn't there a the book rumors? coming out soon? Yeah, it's a rumor. Ish, maybe. 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 So... We're we're obviously gonna learn more about them as we go, but that's kind of what we know for now. They're everything. That's the that's the stuff that will not change. That's you you have the basic premise. It's the working man of the future. <laughs> it's so great. I love them so much. They value just. They listen to grind edits. I know they do. 
I know they're, they they listen to like you know those those channels that pop up where like it's like money motivation. Like, <laughs> no, I know they're listening to that as they're digging a hole. They're they're listening to Nonami motivation to sleep slash study to pretty pretty much money. Pretty All much. I care about is money. I'll be fine as long as I have enough money. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the the space dwarves? They are space dwarves. The I, I okay. I love. I didn't used to love dwarves as much as like I do now, but like rock and stone, obviously. I, again, I may not have as much experience playing the game of Deep Rock, but I love the aesthetic of Deep Rock, and that has just I, I the let's go dig a hole and find as much stuff and money as we can. Yeah. Just it just makes me very happy. If they're just some silly little guys and digging they, a hole, they fulfill it in a fun and unique way that only Forty K could. I, I oh. Learning about them also made also me want to build a very short army. the weird AI core thing I like that a right lot. I like that a lot I want the wrong person to find the mad one <laughs> I want the worst person to find that that sounds like it'd be a good how well do you think Angron and that thing would get along It's depressed more than anything else It's not no. It's not furiously screaming It's 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 a different thing. Angron's oh, angry all the time. This a, is driven insane. It's in the corner and it's all just screaming, all my friends are dead. <laughs> Push Push it to the end. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. You weren't wrong when you said it was basically having like a Joker moment. Mm. One, one bad day. is One really bad day. Just in the corner listening to Lucid Dreams on repeat. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, brings an end to this episode. Again, your choices are the Abhumans and the Rogue Traders. That's I it. mean, not to one of them will make it. One of them won't. This is a Hell in a Cell grudge match. Not to put my thumb on the scale, but I would love to see more about the Abhumans. I'd love to learn more about the Abhumans. Just because you said that, I think the Rogue Traders are going to win. That's real unfortunate. And they are going to get a video game soon, so I'm sure the hype is... Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Either way... Thank you as always for watching. Thank you for that cool thing that's now right behind us. That's <laughs> right. We updated the set a little bit for those of you who watching the video. If you're listening, it's a plaque, baby. It's a, it's a cool one with our names on it. And they're in the right order. Right and left and everything, too. It's great. Oh, I oh love my it. God. That does work out perfectly. Oh, I, I, got, I got specific about it to make sure it would. One of these days, we're going to switch a roo just to make people anxious. Oh, yeah. I've heard it does every time we do. And I love it to no end. But <laughs> that does... I'm still proud of the one bit that we did when we were, like, doing information on the Alpha Legion. I'm so excited. I saw people praising us for committing to the bit for switching shirts for that. I'm like... Oh, God, yeah. It's such a good bit. I cannot wait for the Alpha Legion episode. It will be... It will be confusing. I promise you right now, it'll be the most useless episode I've ever put out. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, when I do an Alpha Legion episode, the goal is you walk in thinking you know about them and you leave knowing nothing. I want you to conf I want you to wonder whether it was the Berenstein or the Berenstein Bears levels of confusion. This will That's be this will be I the want. Uh, Did Mandela die in prison? The Mandela levels. effect. Yeah. Uh, the video. Oh God. <laughs> one can only hope. But that brings an end to this one, and we will see. It's actually not a very short video. <laughs> I was going to say short, but it's not. <laughs> and uh, thank you for that, and thank you as always for being you.